This week we're going to finish putting those rafters on. We are going to put something fun on the front porch and we are going to start the roofing. By the way, this is actually further than we're going to get in today's video. I'm having to refilm my intro to my video after I've already started next week's video. So you're getting a sneak peek of what we're doing next week too. So stay tuned and see how much we get done today. All right, I did put the rafter ends onto the sides of the dormer. I was going to do that on video, and there was just literally no way for me to do it where you guys could see what I was doing because it's so tight and so dark in that area. I couldn't get lighting to work at all. So they went on basically the same way as the ones on the front porch roof. I just spaced them evenly, lined them up, and it's pretty straightforward. So now we're going to put the rafter on the front and that's this piece of wood here it's the same dimensions as these rafter ends except it's strips and you get enough to do all around the house so the book the instruction book gives you angles that you're supposed to lay the trim on top of and cut it and I tried that and wasted a good chunk of wood where so I am barely had enough to finish so instead I found craft sticks and I cut my craft sticks and worked out my angles because I found that I wanted to get it a little tighter and this worked out to be a perfect angle. This way I can try it and I can verify, yep, that's the angle I want. So then I just take that craft stick and I hold it up to the end of my piece of wood and I'm hoping and praying that this is enough because this is what I have left. <laughs> like I said, I ended up short because I screwed up one piece. So now, I've done the sides and I worked out all the, the issues with the sides of the house. So what I figured out, because I want to have this about the same, sticking out about the same as my rafter ends. So I'm coming through, I'm drawing a line where the end of this roof comes. And before I glued the rafter ends in, I traced what the angle was that they're cut at on the ends here. So I've made a mark. This is where the edge, whoops, this is where the edge of my roof comes. I'm going to line up my rafter end. And I know that although these up on the porch stuck out more, the ones on the dormer barely stick out past the roof. So I'm just lining up just to skosh. I'm eyeballing that one. And then I'm going to use that as my template to cut. So make sure I've got the right end. Hold on. Make sure I've got I've got the wrong end. Don't I? Do I have? All right. I think it's the same. All right. Yep. That's right. Okay. Cut that. And then this one is going to go right here. Now I can go ahead. Let me double check. Yeah, I've got enough. I'm going to cut, making sure I've got the right angle. Is this right? Oh, hey, that's right. That comes there. I can mark here. I can cut. Now I make sure that I'm cutting the right direction. Yes, I cut one of them upside down on the side. Luckily, it was a short piece. It was the back piece. So I was able to fix it. And now double check that they are fitting just the way you want them. And they do. They are perfect. So now I'm going to figure out. Oh, I laid my glue right in front of the camera. That's why I can't find it. Now once the house is turned right side up again, we'll need to touch up the tips on all of these rafter ends and like there's a spot on the rafter ends and on these rafters all of them are going to need just a tiny bit of touch up paint got some super glue here and to get this in place get it lined up with the edge of the roof and kind of hold it in place 
some of these I've had to tape. Some of them have worked without taping. I think that one's going to stay. All right. Off camera, I'm just putting glue on the bottom edge of this rafter, this front rafter. A little super glue in faces. Space that super glue out so it'll hold. A little bit of glue where the two meet. And if you've got spaces that didn't get as close as you would like, that's what spackle's for. I'm going to go through, I'm going to spackle. Rather than really fuss about getting that edge cut perfectly, I'm going to fill it with spackle. It will be fine. I can do some touch-up painting on there. And those are in place. Oops, this one's not. Okay. There they go. I'm going to keep an eye on them over the next hour or so to make sure they stay glued where they are. And we're going to do something that's totally optional. That's just something I like to do on my dollhouses. So I'm going to move the camera and I'll meet you in just a second. So what we're looking at here is that, that front porch, that beam that goes across the top of the front porch with our arches. Front door is right there on the window. And I want to be able to hang Oh, like flower baskets or bird feeders or something from the front porch. And this is going to be easier to install my, my, eye for, my screw eye now while the house is upside down than once I turn the house right side up. So I got some small screw eyes. I will have a picture of these on the blog post. Um, I just got these at the normal Ace Hardware. They were like two, under 250 for the package. There's 14 of them. I'm going to use five on the dollhouse. So let me get set up get a picture of this before I tear the package apart and then I'll show you how to put some in. Alright, so I'm going to start with this one. This one is lined up so it's centered with pretty much as close to centered with the porch post as I could make it. And I'm just going to start in my hole with a push pin. I just need something to get this little tiny um, screw end into. And let me. And I measured, so I tried to center on the post on this beam front to back and then centered over that. And now let's see if I can get this in on camera. That's always fun. Try not to tip it as you're going in, it's really hard to not tip these. But and I don't know that I've ever seen anyone else do this on a dollhouse. I got this idea because my dad put something similar on our real house when I was growing up because my mom always hung flower pots on just potted plants on the front porch. And so he did that to make it easier and I thought, well, why not do it on a dollhouse? Now, just make sure you line all of them up the same direction. Like This time, I've got them going front to back. So I'm going to turn the camera off. I'm going to put these two in, and I'm going to put two in on the sides on the roof, and I'll show you where those are after they're in. So let me get these put in, and I'll show you how it looks. All right, excuse any shaking. I'm trying to hand hold the camera. So you can kind of see I've got three screw eyes. One, two, three lined up here, centered in the beam, centered over this, as close to the arch as I could get it, and then centered between. And then I'm going to slowly move over here. This is directly above the porch railing, and it is centered between here and here. And there's a matching one at the far end, which I don't know if the camera's really picking up, but it's there, and I'll have photos in the blog post. But those will allow me to hang whatever I want to hang from the front porch, and it's just so much easier to put them in now while the house is upside down. So let me put the camera back on the tripod, and we'll move on to our next step. All right, I started to do this and hadn't turned the camera on again, so I'll redo this part. So we need to put the, the uh, chimney onto the roof now so that when we roof it, 
put the shingles on, the, the glue on the chimney will be dry. So what we need to do is place it one and a half inches from the end of the roof and then two inches down. And since we already have our shingle marks at inch wide spots, we know that this is the top corner for our door, uh, our chimney, and this is the side edge. So I've got my chimney that I had already um, painted a while back with the same finish as the foundation has. And I'm putting some tacky glue. Mainly I'm using tacky glue because I can't get to my wood glue this morning. I put it away and ow, I'm not going to go dig it out today. So now, hopefully without getting in your way, I am placing the chimney right at those marks. And I'm going to hold it there for just a second till the uh, super glue dries and then I'm going to let this sit until I get the shingles stained and that is our next step is to stain all those shingles. So I'll, I'll show you how to do that in just a moment. All right, now we are going to do probably the messiest part of this whole project. We're going to stain this, the shingles. You don't have to stain your shingles if you like this light color. That's cool. It doesn't matter. I wanted mine dark, so I am to stain mine a black. Use a penetrating wood stain on them. This is Minwax, and it's in the color Ebony. I did some last night, which are in here, just so I knew that it was the color I wanted, and I got my process kind of down. And protect your work surface, wear at least one glove. I found I couldn't use my glove on my right hand, but I needed one on my left hand. So what I'm doing, I poured out just a little bit of the stain. Be sure you shake or stir your can of stain. It will settle badly and then it won't have any color. So get it really well mixed and pour a little bit into a plastic cup. I'm using, oh, a cup that likes some canned fruit came in, one of those, you know, lunchtime setups. Oh, and I have a pan here with paper towels in it because that's my landing zone. So drop one at a time because I found they stick together really badly if there's more than one in there. Don't worry if you miss a spot. Out with the tweezers. I think it's obvious why you're using tweezers. Wipe them in your paper towel and onto the drying surface. And just keep that up until you have them all done. Um, I envision a long day with some movies on Netflix or, and or some music on Spotify to keep me occupied while I do this task. Um, and I'll talk to you when I get it done. All right, now it's about four and a half hours of staining shingles later and I thought I would show you how I have come up with doing this. Now the, the key is get the stain on the shingles however works best for you and in the last hours I have tried several methods and as although this is super messy as you can see from my glove I've got a glove on this hand doesn't because I couldn't use a glove on this hand what I've come up with that's working best for me and I thought I'd show you, just dip just a, just a little bit in and use that glove to just rub the stain into the shingle and drop it in the pan of, of stained shingles. For me, that is working the best. I'm getting the best coat. And remember, you don't have to have both sides coated perfectly. If one side has a blank spot on it where it didn't get stained, not a big deal. That can be your side that you glue down. So I thought I'd just update you with that, and I'm going to finish up because this is all I have left. I am so ready to be done with this part of the project. I'll talk to you in a few minutes. All right, now that the shingles are stained and dried and ready to put on, I'm going to do one more step before I add my shingles. Now this is totally optional, but the area around the chimney, around this roof, and around this side here in the dormer, I'm going to add flashing to it. In a real house, that would be there to, it would be a metal strip that's bent that would prevent water from seeping down in those areas. And I like the look of the roof better with flashing. Over the years, I've used several different things. Today, I decided to just go with some cardstock because that's what I had. Now, you can use 
a silver color or you can use a black or copper color if you've got that. I tried several things I had. I decided to just go with some black cardstock. So let me turn the camera around and I'll show you how I'm going to cut it for both here and these places. I have a piece of, well it was 12 by 12, I've done the two pieces of flashing on the other side of the dormer already just to make sure this was going to look good. So I'm going to cut some strips and score them to fold them to go in the areas that I need to use them. <clears throat> Excuse me. Spring. My sinuses do not like spring. So I'm going to start out with the pieces that are going around the chimney and up the sides of the dormer. And for that I'm going to cut, I'll probably cut a strip for each. Now I'm lining my ruler up with an eighth inch at the edge of the paper and I've got just a, a table knife, just a, like you use from the kitchen. And I'm scoring that really well. That will make it bend easier. <clears throat> now I'm going to go up about 3 eighths of an inch. Now this measurement, the eighth inch is important that you get it right. This eighth inch, or quarter inch extra is to get, bring it to 3 eighths inch. That measurement, it's up to you. That's going to be covered by roof. Then I'm going to cut at that spot. And this is what's going along the chimney and along the wall of the dormer. And I probably won't need two full pieces, but I'm going to cut two full pieces. Now where that fold is, I'm going to fold it. All along that, fold, that score line. And because I've scored it, it's going to want to fold where I want it to fold. And all we're going to see of this is going to be this eighth inch piece that we scored for the fold. So I'm going to finish folding this strip. I'm going to cut one more just like it, and then I'll be back to show you what goes on the roof between the two roofs. All right, now for the edge, that's the piece that's going to go in that little valley in the roof, I'm going to score it at a quarter inch and then cut it at a half inch. That way I've got enough to go underneath my shingles on both sides. But it's up to you how wide you want to have it, how far you want to have it go under your shingles. Again, we're just going to fold it at that score line. And once you get it started, it folds pretty easy because we've scored it. Now this black paper has a white core, so it shows white on the edge. If that bothers you on the edges that are going to show, you could take like a Sharpie marker and run along that edge of that paper. It doesn't bother me. You don't really see it once it's in place. So I'm not going to bother with that. Now something I did that I forgot to show you guys as I'm taking this knife and just reinforcing that fold on all of these. That way it'll lay nice. So I'm going to turn you back around and we're going to start putting this on the house. All right, I'm hoping that the lighting is all right. It's a little dark over here. I apologize for that. So I'm going to mark this here and I'm going to kind of fold. And I've got the, the top corner at the back corner of my chimney. I'm going to kind of mark where this is. Kind of fold it up. I'm going to just take my knife and I'm going to make a slice. See, I made a slice. Hopefully, the, hopefully it's not so dark that you're not seeing what I'm doing. And then I'm going to again just kind of fold it up. And I'll make a slice. I'm slicing that quarter inch side, the wide side, past where I scored. This way it will just fold around a little neater. And since I can't put my head where I would like to because the camera's in the way, 
I'm kind of guessing at that, at that part. Yeah, that's going to work. So I am going to put just some tacky glue right here. Like I said, this just makes it look a little more finished. It's totally optional. You don't have to do this. Put some blue here. So I'm going to have to turn the camera off and actually move it so I can get where I can see to glue this side and the top on and then I'll come back and show you how to trim it. All right, that's glued on. I'm going to now take just a pair of really fine pointed scissors and I'm not worried about where I cut the bottom, the flat part, the part that goes against the roof, just the part that goes against the chimney and then I have just like a skinny stick or a craft stick and I'm using that to kind of help push this up so I can make sure it's nice and flat. All right, let's do this one. This is our one that we did last. It's a little bit wider. And I've already done the other side of the roof. So I'm going to start this one right about here. And I'm going to put glue right here. Then I'll take you around the house and I'll show you the, how, what we're going to do. All right. Don't worry about messy gluing as long as it's the gluing that's on underneath the roof shingles. We're going to shingle over all of this. It's not going to show. Just be neat where it's going to show. All right, I'm going to have to shift the camera, so I'll be right back. All right, so I did this side last night just to make sure everything was going to work, and also because I knew that one piece of cardstock would not reach. So I'm going to try and line this up. I'm going to slit right there. And then I'm only going to overlap that by just a tiny bit. So this about there. Glue. I did throw the glue on this side. All right. Okay. Glue that down. And by the time, make, you don't even have to make sure this part is even because we're never going to see the edges of this. We're only going to see just a little bit through here. This piece, let me move the camera down. I'm really hoping you guys can see what I'm doing here because it's hard to see here. This piece goes in just like around the chimney. I'm going to go ahead and do that on the other side and then I'll be back and we'll start putting the roofing on. All right, as I was turning the dollhouse around, I realized I also needed flashing on this wall too. And I started to record it, but then FedEx, the FedEx delivery man rang my doorbell. So kind of interrupted that. So now we're going to put the, the shingles that we stained the other day onto our roof. We're going to start at this bottom line. Now I'm going to do what the book said, the came directions said not to do. And I'm going to tell you why I'm going to do it the way I am. So the directions on the instruction book for putting on your roof, putting your shingles on, tell you not to use tacky glue. And they also tell you something else that I disagree with. Well, I know why they tell you not to use tacky glue. Because if you were to cover the whole back of this little thin piece of shingle with tacky glue, it's going to warp and you're going to have a mess. I'm not going to cover the whole back of it with tacky glue. I'm going to run a small bead. The first row will be glued down solid. The whole part that has got glue on it will be glued down and it will stay. It will be fine. Up here, and I'll show you when we get that far. There's only going to be two points that the shingle is going to be touching. So that's the only place. So there's not going to be glue on the whole back. The shingle literally only touches 
here and here. And I only put glue on that line. So I'm using tacky glue. You can use a different glue if you're more comfortable with that. That's up to you. Now something they do tell you to do, they tell you to use a hot glue gun. Don't ever, no matter how tempting it sounds, use a hot glue gun. And on my blog post, I'm going to tell you a little, have a little story time about what happened to a friend of mine that put the roof on her first all house with a glue gun and we both learned our lesson very quickly. So check the blog post out for that story. In the meantime, let's get started. Alright, at this point in the video, this roof should be bare and I should be showing you how to put this row of shingles on. And then I was going to pause and show you how to put this row of shingles on. But due to a problem with my footage I shot yesterday that I didn't realize until late last night when I was trying to do the finishing touches on the edit for this video, those two clips got messed up. So I'm going to show you how to do those two steps on the dormer. So let me reset where my tripod and my house are and I'll show you how to do the first two rows on your roof. Alright, so I will show you those first two rows here on the door, side of the dormer. So when you start the porch, if you start any roof the same. So we're going to start in this corner. We will be utilizing these lines as we go up the roof, but for the first row, we're going to put our glue on the back of our shingle and be sure and choose the side of the shingle that looks best to have up. You remember some of them have, might not be fully stained on the back. And I'm going to line this first one up right like this. Because I couldn't put a full row of shingles on, I'm just going to start there. And I'm going to put another one. And there's a couple of different ways to do this initial row. And, and on this one, I won't be going all the way to the edge. Oops. Where did I put? There's my shingles. I forgot where I laid my bucket of shingles. And I like how the different colors, it makes the roof look more aged. I talk about that in the blog post. Be sure and go to the blog post. I have a a story about uh, a friend's dollhouse roof and I talk about why I chose the roof color I did and all kinds of things on the blog post. So you're going to continue that on and you'll go all the way across your roof. I'll talk to you about how to trim the sides of the dormer uh, in next week's video. So normally I would let this dry and I really recommend you let it dry but I want to get this video up since it's already way past when it should have gone up. So you're going to cut your first shingle for the second row in half lengthwise. We're only going to put a half shingle on to start this row. And that is so that we don't end up with the shingles lining up with each other. Now we're going to use those lines. And the first one I'm going to put glue on the shingle itself. Now we're going to put glue and we only need one bead of glue for each shingle. I'm just going to put a row of glue there. I'm going to line this shingle, making sure I have the best looking side up. And I'm going to do that. And I'm going to move all along this row of shingles. Hold them down for a little bit until the glue catches. Oops, this one got messed up. And because this line is moving around, that's why you would normally, I would let this first row dry completely before I put the second row on. But in the interest of getting this video up at a reasonable time, I'm rushing this one. So that's how we do that. So let's move back to the video I shot yesterday. All right, that's as far as we're going to get this week because this video is getting kind of long. So next week we'll move on up the roof and we'll work around the dormers. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Be sure and check the blog post for lots more information. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, I would love it if you would do so. Hit that like button if you like the video and pass the links on to your friends that also do miniatures. And I'll talk to you next week. Bye.